Module 1, Plate Tectonics. The big idea in Module 1, Plate Tectonics, is that plate motion is caused by the movement of thermal energy within Earth. From here, we will also answer some questions. What is the theory of plate tectonics and how does it work? Second, what forces inside the Earth create and change features on the surface? And lastly, what happens when the plates crash together, pull apart, and slide against each other? Let us learn more about how plates move. In the early 20th century, there was no single theory of how Earth processes and correlated. Much geologic study was done locally because transportation and communication were expensive. Based upon their observations, geologists developed theories that emphasize vertical changes. For example, an erosion process that leveled high places and a mountain building process that lifted them up again. Then in 1915, Alfred Wegener proposed a hypothesis that suggested that the Earth's continents once were part of a large supercontinent, as is shown in Figure 1, called Pangea. Then about 200 million years ago, this supercontinent broke into pieces that drifted over the surface of Earth like traps on water. Pangea was a rich form of rocks floating on the asthenosphere. Like a group of boats in the middle of a lake, they drift apart over time. That's what happened to Pangea, and eventually seven continents were formed. The Earth's crust is broken into many pieces. These pieces are called lithospheric plates that move slowly relatively to each other. The total thickness of lithospheric plates is about 100 kilometers. Compared to deeper layers of the Earth, lithospheric plates are colder, more rigid, and much more brittle, or capable of breaking when large forces are applied. The Earth's surface is divided into seven major and eight minor parts. The largest plates or major tectonic plates are the following. We have Antarctica, Eurasia, North America, Africa, South America, Pacific, which is almost entirely oceanic, and Indo-Australian plate. These plates are about approximately 125 kilometers thick, maximum thickness below mountain ranges. Oceanic plates are thinner than the continental plates and even thinner at the ocean ridges where the temperatures are higher. Some plates are large enough to consist of both continental and oceanic crustal portions such as South American plate. How fast are plates moving? The rate of plate motions are typically an inch or two per year or 1 to 10 centimeters per year. Although this seems slow on the human time scale, the movement over hundreds of millions of years builds and destroys land masses. In the 1960s, geological data led to the development of the theory of plate tectonics. According to the theory of plate tectonics, Earth's surface is made of separate slabs called plates that move slowly over Earth's upper layers. The bottom part of a plate is made of a rigid layer of Earth's mantle. The top part of a plate is made of continental crust, oceanic crust, or both. In the next session, we will identify what forces inside the Earth create and change features on the surface. Watch this movie to learn more. We call those pieces plates. Yep. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is the border between several plates. They're being dragged apart by forces from deep inside the planet. You can think of it like a pot of soup. The Earth's core is the burner and the mantle is the boiling soup. As the soup near the burner heats up, it becomes less dense and rises. 
When it gets to the top, it cools off and sinks down toward the heat. In physics, those are called convection currents. A similar process is driving the mantle, and it's taking the plates along for the ride. That movement is called plate tectonics. Let us talk about the composition of Earth's layers. The lithosphere is the outermost part of the Earth. It is subdivided into tectonic plates. The lithosphere of the Earth consists mainly of the crust and the upper mantle. There are basically two types of the lithosphere, namely oceanic lithosphere and continental lithosphere. The lithosphere also contains the different types of rocks, such as the igneous, sedimentary, and the metamorphic rocks. The lithosphere includes both the land area and the water bodies. The land area consists of 30% of the total area of the Earth. In the continental regions, it has a thickness of 35 to 50 kilometers, and under the ocean beds, it gets reduced to 6 to 12 kilometers. This outer layer of the Earth has a depth of more than 100 kilometers. The continental crust is broadly granitic in composition and with a density of about 2.7 grams per cubic centimeters. It is somewhat lighter than the oceanic crust. The continental crust is mainly most of rocks with a composition similar to granite, the light colored rocks. The continental crust is also less dense than oceanic crust, though it is thicker. About 40% of the Earth's surface is now comprised by continental crust. The oceanic crust is made mostly of rocks with a composition of basalt, a dark colored rock like the rocks that make up the Hawaiian volcanoes. Sima is the Earth's crust's lower layer and contains rocks with lots of magnesium silicate minerals. Sedimentary rocks are types of rock that are formed by the accumulation or deposition of small particles in subsequent cementation of mineral or organic particles on the floor of oceans or other bodies of water on the Earth's surface. The metamorphic rocks started out as some other type of rock, but have been substantially changed from their original igneous, sedimentary, or earlier metamorphic form. Metamorphic rocks form when rocks are subjected to high heat, high pressure, hot mineral-rich fluids, or more commonly, some combinations of these factors. So this is the average oceanic crust thickness, which is around 5 to 10 kilometers. The Earth's crust has also silica deposits, mostly compounds made of silicon and oxygen, and they are abundant in rocks and minerals in both oceanic and continental crusts. As illustrated in figure 20, Earth's internal layers generally become denser with depth. The crust and uppermost mantle, which form the lithosphere, are made of rocky materials, mostly silicates. The asthenosphere is a weaker, plastic-like layer upon which Earth's lithospheric plates move. Much like the lithosphere, the mantle below the asthenosphere also is composed of silicates. As the tonic plates move, they interact with each other at their boundaries. There are three main kinds of plate motions. Plates can move apart, move together, or slide past one another. These three types of motion result in three types of plate boundaries. The divergent plate boundaries, convergent plate boundaries, and transform plate boundaries. Different geological features are produced as plates interact at the different types of boundaries. The movement of these plate boundaries are described in the picture. 
Seismic activity is greatest along plate borders. At convergent boundaries where two plates collide, at divergent boundaries where they pull apart, and at transform boundaries where they slide past each other. At all three boundaries, there's enormous pressure on the Earth's crust. That's the topmost layer of the lithosphere. The pressure can build up for years. The longer it takes to release, the bigger the earthquake. For decades, scientists have known that earthquakes are not distributed randomly. Instead, they usually occur in well-defined zones. The zones where earthquakes occur are the boundaries of Earth's plates. In fact, data from earthquakes help geologists to understand the structure of Earth's ocean floor and to infer the structure and motion of Earth's place. Figure 22 shows the distribution of these large earthquakes. Where can we see Earth's major volcanoes? Most of Earth's volcanoes are located along the plate boundaries, which rim the Pacific Ocean. They take place in subduction zones where continental and oceanic materials are being mixed and partially melted. This plate motion and the associated melting create a variety of magma types that can potentially erupt. Large earthquakes and violent volcanic eruptions often happen along this ocean continent in ocean-to-ocean -ocean convergent boundaries. A volcano takes place at a point where material from the inside of the Earth is escaping to the surface. Volcanoes usually happen along the fault lines that separate the tectonic plates that make up the Earth's crust, or the outermost layer of the Earth. At divergent boundaries like the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, there's a gap in the lithosphere. So magma, molten rock from the mantle, is constantly pushing up along the boundaries. These are the most volcanically active places on Earth. Volcanoes are also common at boundaries called subduction zones. That's when a dense ocean plate converges with a lighter continental plate. The heavier plate gets pushed below, down into the mantle. Some of it melts and the magma erupts farther inland. Mountain ranges are also not randomly distributed. They exist where plates collide or along volcanic fault lines. These mountain ranges are series of connected mountains. They take place both in land and in the oceans. This map reveals that some major mountain ranges on land are along the edges of continents in oceans, while in inland areas tend to have lower elevations as noted by the green or tan shades. Beneath the ocean surface, Earth's crust also varies in height and depth. Ridges, the higher elevations, are the light blue curvy lines in the ocean. Dark blue areas represent trenches, or the deeper parts of the ocean floor. Have you heard the term Pacific Ring of Fire? The Ring of Fire is a string of volcanoes and sites of seismic activities or earthquakes around the edges of the Pacific Ocean. Deep ocean trenches and high mountain ranges are also part of the Ring of Fire. The Pacific Plate's Ring of Fire is the most active earthquake zone. About 90% of the world's earthquakes and 81% of the world's largest earthquakes happen along the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire is a massive chain of these volcanoes. Dense sedimentary rock making up the Pacific seafloor is subducted, transformed into metamorphic rock through pressure and heat, and then recycled as igneous rock through volcanic eruptions. In other words, plate tectonics drives the rock cycle, the constant process of transformation and renewal of the Earth's crust. It also creates our most prominent geologic features, mountain ranges. That happens when two continental plates converge. Since they're both about the same density, neither one subducts. Instead, it's like a slow-motion car crash. The plates buckle and warp. The land pushes up into jagged peaks, 